Hey, welcome back. And today we're down in the garden after a storm came through again last night. This is about the third very bad storm system that we've had in this area this year. And it's really just wreaked havoc on uh, the local gardeners. And not only in this state, but Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, all of us have been hit with some very severe weather this year. This weather was actually off the uh, hurricane or tropical storm that hit a couple days ago down in the Texas, Louisiana area. And uh, it's traveled on through here. Now, the reason I'm doing this video and showing you this weed infested garden that really I haven't been able to take care of because of the weather, the rain. You just can't get down in here and work with mud. Now, I don't do a potted flower bed or potted buckets or things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just down here, I've got the area that I can plant. But with that come certain risks that you must take. And there's a few people that I YouTube with and I'm members of their channels, uh, subs of theirs. And they also have the same issues, Just Living, Oki Rob. I mean, Oki Rob just got hit by probably a tornado and it pretty much devastated his garden. And our thoughts or prayers are going out to him. Uh, just Living, he's probably getting some of the same rough weather that I'm getting. And with this stuff, you just can't get out here and work it with you can hand pull it but you're compressing the dirt around the plants and you really don't want to do that i mean as you can tell if i do that and i'm shaking this dirt very lightly it's not compressing however and i'm a 220 pound guy i'm kind of on the heavy side so you take a size 10 boot and you mash it, it's not going to fall apart. And you're compacting your roots. You're probably doing more damage than you're doing good. So I try to stay out of this. But this video today is going to talk about something that somebody asked me about the other day. My father called me and said all of his corn was flat on the ground. And as you can see, we've got the same issue with some of our stalks. What do I do about that? I could come in, I could place them back up, and I could mound dirt around them. That's it. What do I do? Nothing. I absolutely leave them alone. Uh, in a previous video, after the flood came through, I showed you how my okra plants and how my corn had been washed flat. Uh, most of the... Uh, roots had been exposed on the okra and I'm going to take you real quick and I'm going to show you the results of not messing with it just leaving it alone and letting the plant survive on its own without any kind of help from me whatsoever. Now what have I done to my okra plants since they were flat on the ground and the roots were exposed? Absolutely nothing. I let them kind of shift up and you can tell by some of the stalks that when the flood came through here, the plants actually laid down and their growing pattern changed. Well, once that growing pattern changed and their roots established again into the ground, I came through with a garden tiller and just tilled each side of it and kind of mounted dirt up along that root system and I left them alone. But I gave them their opportunity to do it themselves. I did not mess with these plants whatsoever. And as you can tell, they're turning out to be some pretty good okra plants. Now, will the corn behind me ride itself just like this okra did? Perhaps not. I wouldn't put a lot of faith in that, but it will pick itself up. It will pick itself up off the ground and kind of start growing back in the upward position. And that's normal for corn that's blowed down. I have known people that go out there and stick the corn back up and it does more damage than it does good. It might damage the root system, it could break the stalk, things of that nature. So I just tend to leave it alone. Now, you can do what you want. This is just my opinion, and I do not wish to push my opinions on anybody. This is just the way I do my gardening. And there's a lot of YouTube guys out there that would disagree with me, and that's fine, that's their opinion. But this is how i done it, this is what I get, and this is the results I have. So... I can't complain about it. I think it looks pretty good for going through what it's went through. 
the corn looks like poop, but hey, it is what it is. You can't stop Mother Nature. However, I can stop something that Mother Nature brings with her, and that's pests. And in the clip next, I'm going to show you the main enemy of your squash plants right now, and you may be looking at them and not even realize that they're doing damage. So let's go to the squash plant, and I'm going to show you exactly what to look for. Down here, my father and I just call these simply squash bugs. Uh, they look like a stink bug of some sort. Uh, I'll try to look up the uh, proper term for them, but trust me, I'm probably not going to be able to find it. But I'm sure a viewer can fill in in the comments what kind of bug it is. Probably will be Oki Rob. I'm just not, you know, bug smart. All right, see these squash plants right here? Look at the bugs on that system. And they're already attacking it. Now this is the one that lived through the storm. Now these guys get down here. Let me move it down here. These guys get on your squash plants. And what they do, these guys get on your squash plants. And what they do is they lay their eggs. And their eggs will start attacking your root system. Now what do you do with these guys? Well, with me, I spray seven, liquid seven. I don't care uh, what kind of uh, home pesticide you've got. Three things that's gonna live through a nuclear war, pimento cheese, roaches, and those jokers. They just don't die. I mean, you can spray with whatever you want, but, uh, <clears throat> Let me show you what I do. Now, for all you organic farmers, close your eyes, please. I don't need no death threats or hate mail. Let's get you set up over here. All right, now this squash plant's pretty much already gone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the living heck out of it. Now this is a commercial grade pesticide. I'm gonna saturate the ground. I'm just gonna pour it on it. I want these guys out of my garden. I want their eggs out of my garden. So, if you're getting a bug that resembles that, see if it'll zoom in some. If you're getting a bug that resembles that on your squash plants, you better do something now, right now, or you're going to lose them. <laughs> now, we've got some beautiful squash that actually made it through the storm the past couple of weeks and it's starting to put on zucchini and you really don't want to lose that so you've got to ask yourself what do I want to do do I want to keep my organic mindset and that's fine if you do or do I want to prevent my plants from taking a hit from these bugs well I want to save my plants And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just going to spray around the roots and the ground because that's typically where they get at. So, if I've scared somebody by using commercial pesticides, hmm, 
I, I just haven't found anything else that would deal with that problem. So I have to use what I've got to use. This gardening season's not been that great. And uh, here's another issue I've seen him crawling up. Looks like a stink bug. If you see these guys on your squash plants, you better do something with them. I'm telling you right now, or they're gone. They're gone. So, that's it for this video today. And uh, I've dealt with the squash bugs the way I deal with them. Now, not many people will agree with the way I use pesticides in my garden. I'm sorry, I'm just not a really good believer in home remedy pesticides I've tried them believe me I've tried I've tried I've tried and I just never seen the results and in the weather pattern like we've had this year with all the rain you've really got to have something that takes action once you spray it directly on those bugs the way I do I do spot spray I've said that in previous videos and I'll keep saying that I do not come out here and spray massive amounts of pesticides in my garden but i know my squash is in trouble i know that there's an issue and i've got to deal with it and i've got a choice to make i can either use a pesticide that i know that will work and rid my garden of the pest or i can go up there and start mixing up some apple cider vinegar concoction that may or may not work so my choice was for me it wasn't for you it wasn't for the next person viewing this video it was strictly for me now, my bees are not on these squash plants. Very rarely do my bees frequent a squash plant. They will, however, go straight to that cucumber vine, and I don't spray those. Anything my bees populate a lot on or come in, and I see them a lot in the, in the blooms, I don't mess with those. I'll, I'll just let whatever happens happen to them. I do not want to hurt my bees. But my squash plants, I spray the base, I spray the stalks, I try to stay away from the blooms, and just literally I soak the ground around them. I want to get those eggs out of the ground, I want to pull them, I want to pull that bottom root system. I want those bugs out of there. And that's the only way I really have found out how to do it. So, until next time, I really hope y'all have a great weekend. I hope your week is great also. So. Until next time, hopefully I'll see you back down here at the garden spot. Y'all have a great one. Get your gardening on, you know, and remember, real gardening have weeds. Yep, you can slap a tater on that, we're done. Until next time, hope to see y'all back down at the garden spot. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.